And welcome to the Corporate Facility Council's of this month's first Wednesday webinar for June. Are you ready for a deep dive into your core business? Expand your workplace strategy with a strategy. Presented by Barry Lynch and W. Roger Clark. Everyone has been muted for audio quality, and this webinar is being recorded and will be sent to all that have registered for the webinar. And if you have any questions at any time during the presentation, please feel free and type them into the question box. We'll cover them during the Q&A portion at the end of the webinar. At this time, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to our presenters, Barry Lynch and Roger Clark. Good morning. Originally, this was scheduled as, as more of a podcast. The podcast will be available on the website soon. Today, we're just going live via IFMA radio. And this uh, presentation has three parts. We've got a, a kind of a scenario where the strategic facility manager uh, talks to the CFO. And then we'll go into a deep dive into things that you can actually do at work to start doing strategic facility planning, no matter the level of resources that you have. So. Um, Stay tuned. It's, it's not like old time radio, but it's a uh, new time webinar radio. Um, and we're going into the scenario now. Come in, Barry. I've got a handful of things to talk to you about. Okay. Let's get to the budget update out of the way first. No changes on target. Well, you know, you were the only department that couldn't deliver a 10% cut in 2009. Uh, it's been going up every year, and I just don't know if I can trust you to deliver on the next topic that we need to talk about. Whoa, Roger. Oh, hold on just a second. Um, do you remember the facility cost conundrum? Uh, yes, yes, I remember, but listen, that's not your entire budget, uh, Barry. Yeah, but it's the only part we can benchmark. Okay, fair enough. Well, look, I used to work for a guy who said he could cut 10% out of any budget, and he always started by asking, what's your biggest line item? Well, I'll tell you my top three. Lease expense, depreciation, and our disaster recovery site and program. Really, the only thing we can do is cut least square feet, and we already did that at the Eastern Regional Office. Okay, okay, you win for now. Well, the reason why I'm I'm saying that you know we're in this situation is that we we've got I've got some good information for you, Roger. It's the strategic facility planning exercise we've been doing. The uh, phases, where you've been, where we're headed, how to get there, consensus building, and it it promotes strategic thinking, don't you know? Well, good. What a great segue, Barry. You're going to need some strategic thinking for what I've got for you. Now, let's look back at 2008. We were in a slow growth mode. Yep. Since 08, we've been essentially in a flat economy. We've had a steady staff level with marginal growth. Roger. Regardless of who our next president is, Congress will move to repatriate $1 trillion in overseas profits. Wow. Hey, our company's got some profits sitting overseas, and when the money comes back, I want to spend some on capital for facilities. So, Barry, how much should we be spending on recapitalization and deferred maintenance? Well, Roger, you need to think of the uh, recapitalization as uh, similar to depreciation. So if we're doing 2% uh, a year on a 50-year building, then if you accumulate that over time, then you can get a rough estimate of how much uh, facility renewal we've got hanging out there. But um, at Labar, they've done some studies and really only about 55 to 60 percent of your replacement value uh, of a building requires re um, replacement. So when you do your 2 percent, it's 2 percent of, let's say, 58 percent of the replacement value. So we've got We've got some, some pretty accurate projections. Well, you know, it sounds like we need a budget just for this building because you know the other buildings that we have are leased. But wait, wait, Roger, you got, you've got 
do a, a facility renewal budget for lease space. You got carpet wearing out, paint, and then there's always stuff that's wearing out, light fixtures and so on. Well, what you need to do is this, uh, Barry, is give me some more detail. What about roof replacement, chillers, you know, all that technical stuff that might need replacing. Hey, man, this is your one shot. There's more. All right, all right, I'll, I'll get you that info. But what would you say if I said we were going to add 100 people? What, 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 what where, 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 when, what? Well, Barry, I can't really give you the details. You know insider trading restrictions and actually I really don't know much of the detail yet anyway. Well, with strategic facility planning, it's going to help us get on track, Roger. On the where we've been, where we've been portion, we've done that. Where we're headed, we've got some capacity calculations, so we've got a head start for some growth scenarios. And then how to get there, we need some detail from you so we can start developing some scenarios. And then, of course, the last, last part, consensus building, I'll, I'll get you some wait, options. Wait, wait. What's the difference between a workplace strategy and strategic facility planning? Hey, we did a workplace strategy in, 10, in 2010 at the regional office east. So how is a strategic facility plan different? Well, Roger, you'll recall at the Eastern Regional Office, what we did is we consolidated space to reduce costs, but we also hired a consultant and they helped us improve our work patterns and also increase productivity. What is that? What are you trying to say? I need you to translate that for me. All right, Roger. What that means from a, a physical workplace is that people are moving away from the 1980s. 90s and early 2000s standard when 60% of the people sat in cube farms, 40% sat in offices, and they're moving to uh, hot desking, hoteling, and then they're also implementing flexible work strategies, and they're also making the workplace more healthy, and they're working a lot more closely with the IT department than ever before. So there, what, what we're doing, Roger, is instead of uh, just a one-shot capital budget type of deal, workplace strategy is kind of like a workplace gumbo. It involves a lot of things. You understand gumbo. Absolutely, like that gumbo. But listen, is there any way we can combine the two? Oh, absolutely. You know, we've got four buildings. Headquarters has 500 people capacity, the Eastern Regional Office 250, Western Regional Office 250, and old Nelly has zero. Okay, well look, let's revisit each of these. Let's talk, first of all, let's talk about this headquarters building. Well, right now, we currently have a capacity of 500, but there's only 450 people physically sitting in desks right now. But you know, the true capacity is driven by parking. But we're, we've got the benefit of an office park. So, hey, that's great, Barry. I guess what you're saying is if we can add just 50 people, uh, we can then accommodate the 100 that I'm talking about. Not quite, Roger. You see, we have 50 unfilled headcount at this building. So, theoretically, we're at capacity now. I'm not sure I understand what you mean, Barry. Well, Roger, I, I patted my feet down to HR, and I asked them, how many unfilled headcounts we have. And they said none. And then I asked them how many open positions that are unfilled. And they said, oh, we got 50 of those. And what those are are open positions where the positions were eliminated in 2009 when we were doing our uh, people reductions. And you made an agreement that they could keep those authorized headcounts so that when things turned around, they could fill those positions without going through the whole corporate budgeting spiel. Well, you know, Barry, the economy always turns around. Uh, historically, it started to turn around in the Depression in 1938, and it wasn't World War II that did it, contrary to what you may have been told. Really? Can we add some parking spaces and implement a workplace strategy like we did when we moved the Eastern Regional Office into a new space in 2010? We've got plenty of empty parking spaces. Man, every morning I come around, I can see that with my own eyes. Well, Roger, we don't have as many spaces as you think. We did a survey 
and found out that virtually everyone who works here in this building is present on Monday for staff meetings. I already did some measurements on Google Earth. We've got room for about 20 more parking spaces. Oh, I've got, look, I've got a great idea. What if we build an addition and construct a parking garage? Well, actually, as part of the um, strategic facility plan, we've, we've done that. We've taken a look at that. And in the short term, it's the best deal. But in the long term, it's the worst deal because what happens is seven or eight years down the road, we've got a, we're going to have to go sell this property at a loss again and then go purchase another building. It's a lose-lose proposition. Okay, smart guy. Then what should we do? We go down the street and lease. There's plenty of office space in this, um, in this office park, and we just go and lease some space. Well, I tell you, you facility guys and gals are only concerned about cost. Me, I'm concerned about culture. <laughs> Come on. Now look, we bring a bunch of new people and new departments on board, stick them in a building down the street, and expect them to feel like members of our team and generate serendipity over coffee pot? It ain't going to happen, Barry. No, 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 no. We've, we've studied the organization as part of a strategic facility plan, and what we've done is we've grouped departments together in centers. So what we would do is we put the new people in groups next to the people they would work with in this building, and then we would move like a center off-site. Well, you said there's plenty of space in the market, but let me tell you how the world works. Granted, there's a lot of space right now. Some, something like an overseas earnings tax holiday shows up, and every company will be doing exactly what we do. We'll have a limited pool of real estate brokers. They'll be busy, and we won't get to their full attention. Lease rates will rise. The architects, interior designers will be busy, and we're going to have to wait in line. Uh, you then, when construction time rolls around, the original estimates that we got are not going to be any good because the market will have changed. Increased demand ups the price. So when the time comes, I want to hit the easy button, and that easy button is you, my friend. Changing topics. I hear space is going for around $20 a square foot. How much space are we going to need, Barry? Rough guess off the top of my head, 25,000 square feet. Well, how do you figure that? If you recall, we did 180 feet per square feet, uh, I'm sorry, per person for the Eastern Regional Office a while back. Yes, but in most suburban office buildings, they're designed to have one parking space for either every 250 square feet or 200 square feet. It depends upon the age of the building. Again, parking is going to be the constraint, Roger. It seems like we keep coming back to that. So look, what I need is a full cost. Lease payments, common area charges, capital expenditures, IT, furniture, security signage. Look, Barry, I need a cost for everything. One of the reasons why your predecessor is now back in the mailroom is because he didn't give me full cost for projects. This is a big deal. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Hey, why don't we just move some groups into Old Nelly, that old abandoned headquarter building? Well, Roger, without getting into much of the real estate details, um, Old Nelly, as you recall, is in, a, in an industrial part of town. It's on a corporate site, which is industrial. Employees don't live nearby. There's barbed wire fence around the top, around the site. There's a security guard to even get into the site. And the, the image would not be a positive image for potential uh, new hires as they drive up. It could drive them away. And then on the, on the cost details, Roger, we, we've run this scenario with our uh, a strategic facility plan. We call it under uncertainty. Just made up some scenarios and no matter what you do, the net present value of operating cost and capital to tear old Nelly down is always less than the ongoing operating cost for old Nelly. What? Yep. If you consider the operating cost, um, it always comes up the most expensive option. You've got cleaning, Okay, no cleaning, 
repair and maintenance, you've got some. Uh, you've got a utilities contract, sprinklers contract. Uh, somebody needs to go around check the uh, check the electrical. You've got you, utilities. You've got a you've got to at least heat the building to keep the pipes from bursting. Uh, roads and grounds. There's some costs. Security is uh, is a high cost place. We still have a we still have a 24 hour walkthrough where somebody checks for fires, and then we've got administrative cost which is prorated so there's no reduction there taxes all those taxes go away and that's a high tax building insurance same thing it's a high insurance building because it's a threat to our site okay put it in the capital budget by the way how much would it cost to tear it down 20 cents a cubic foot 20 cents a so if the building is 50,000 square feet at 20 cents a foot. Hey, Barry, that's only $10,000. No, 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 no. You CFOs only think in square feet. We think in cubic feet. You've got to multiply it by the floor to floor height. I don't know what that is, but let's say if it's 10, 10 feet, then the cost would be 100000 Okay, okay. All right, what are the hidden costs, Barry? Well, they're considerable. You're going to have to get a full-time project manager. Um, you know the the uh, uh, you need costs to disconnect the electrical and guess what it's probably integrated with other buildings on that site so it's going to be some high dollars and it's the same thing with the gas connection and then of course we got to disconnect the telephone <laughs> you're telling me we got a telephone in an abandoned building I hard to find that hard to believe yep we've got a functioning elevator in there which is required by the authority having jurisdiction, which is the city, and therefore it's got to work and it's got to have a phone. The water's on, and uh, you know we need to do something with the site, Roger. Um, parking, landscaping. So after you tear it down and haul it away, we, you know we need to at least plant some grass there. All right, Barry. This is what you need to do. You need to get with the manufacturing folks. You know, old Jim. Yep. Well, I want you to talk to him only. He can keep a secret. We don't need the rumor mill going around on this one. If we get too many people in the loop, the paper will have front page news on how we're closing the plant and it will impact the stock price. Remember how you and I were almost fired when we sold the Eastern Regional Office and put people in lease space? Yeah, I got, I got some quotes when putting together the project, the full project, Roger. And the telephone person told her contact, who told her spouse, who mentioned it to some of his coworkers, and uh, at the plant, and the false news spread like wildfire. Well, it's not going to happen again, Barry. I'm not going to hold you to an exact budget on this. Don't call anyone. If there are any budget mishaps, I'll take care of it. Roger, can I get a get you to sign this document attesting to the aforementioned? Barry, let's talk about the Eastern Regional Office. I guess not. <laughs> All right. Well, the Eastern Regional's got 250 people, 180 square feet each. So that's 45,000 square feet. And we planned it when going in for 108% occupancy. And uh, we can't really accommodate much growth as we're already over 100% occupancy. Well, let's look at this lease. Uh, I'm looking at my book here, and it looks like it was commenced in 2009. It's a 10-year lease. Yeah, this is the Eastern Regional. Yeah, yep. early termination penalty. We're paying about a million uh, a year in rent, and we've got a million dollar penalty. Uh, three years remaining on the lease. Uh, tell you what we need to do. We need to demolish Old Nelly. We need to uh, pay the penalty. We need to get a new lease for the East. Uh, and uh, it looks like we would save about uh, an operating cost of about $200,000. All of this needs to be completed by next year, or we don't get the benefit of a one-time earning impact that will affect our stock price. Enough said. Let's now talk about that Western Regional. Okay, so on the Eastern Regional, basically, we're, we're going to look at uh, relocating maybe for a better deal. Uh, at the Western Regional, again, 250 people, 250 square feet per person, $20 per square foot lease rate. So that's a 1.25 million in annual lease payments. So that's 
That's about 300,000 more for the same number of people than in the Eastern Regional. And the office versus workstation ratio is 60% offices to 40%, uh, I'm sorry, 60% workstations to 40% office. Well, stop, stop there, Barry, because to me that's an old, tired-looking office building. You walk onto the floor, it's an expanse of cubicles surrounded by some offices. Yep. There's no view. Now look, I'm going to tell you something, and if you tell anybody, you're fired. All right. I'm well, serious about this. All right. Uh, we're thinking about getting out of hometown city. There's no talent there. There's a high cost of living, and the salaries are too high. Well, what are you going to do, and most importantly, what do you want me to do? Well, actually, I want you to sit tight. Now, here's what I, we're going to do. You need to get with Sally New, our new strategic planning VP, and for now, the plan is you will getting a pro, you'll get a project budget for demolishing old Nelly. Okay. You will be getting a project budget for new lease space for 100 people in this office park. Okay, so we're changing. Got you that. Will, you will be getting a project budget for relocating the Eastern Regional Office, but for 350, not 250. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to handle the Western Regional Office. Uh, I'm going to take your budget for lease space at headquarters and the Eastern Regional, and Sally and I will figure out what to do for the Western Regional. I'm going to tell the planning people they have two choices. Either they'll be here in lease space or in the re Eastern Regional Office. Okay, so we got two scenarios. Got it. All right, so other, line, other stuff that we need to really talk about, Mary, and this is really what I want you to think about. How can you contribute to earnings per share other than through cost control? Well, Roger, we've been looking at, at that in our strategic facility plan in terms of the uh, where you're headed portion. And we've been doing some research. And uh, actually, you know, you can get a lot of value by integrating uh, like a cost segregation strategy into the design process up front. So we're going to look into doing that. That's going to accelerate depreciation and increase earnings per share. Uh, the other thing is, is that all the furniture that we have is fully depreciated. Um, it's a new day out there in the work environment. Uh, you know, if we're going to implement a workplace strategy uh, in one place, we probably want to do it everywhere. And then uh, something else we're doing that I, that I believe that this conversation right now and the work that we've already done with strategic facility planning it's going to help the company decrease time to market. So if you bring in some new people, or if Sally New brings them in, we're going to have a place for them to sit. Some companies, they may have to wait a bit. So um, other things that we can do to help the company, build the brand, uh, and build office space that helps attract and retain employees. So help me help you. Um, two things I need. In my opinion, I think we need a better capital review process. Um, everything's kind of lumped together, and uh, as we're going into an era where we're making more expenditures, uh, this is my proposal that we have categories, uh, facility renewal, business continuity, security, regulatory changes, functional obsolescence, and construction. So um, the other thing I need is some project managers for these projects. Well, what I need you to do, Barry, is finish your project budgeting, and we will get uh, back together. Uh, after we're, we've reviewed your plan, I need the following. Project scope, budget, unit cost, and a schedule. Because I'm going to have to use them in an effective workshop, and I need to generate a budget and plan in real time. And also, I'm going to need your notebook on all your backup material. Uh, as they say in my favorite movie, Barry, may the force be with you. As you wish, Roger. So in our second part of our presentation today, what we're going to talk about is uh, things that you can use back at work. I used to have a boss. He called all the guys Haas, all the women Honey, including VPs from the corporate office in New York. And uh, um, what he always said to me is, uh, he'd say, Haas, 
He said, I, I sent you to that IFMA meeting. What did you learn so that you can help build the company into a better space? So you all can go back and you can say, I've got all these strategies we can implement to get kick-started on strategic facility planning, even if we don't have a lot of time or money. So <clears throat> the, the definition is uh, how do you morph a workplace strategy into a, um, into a strategic facility plan, which kind of includes a workplace strategy under the big tent umbrella. And it's really important to realize that there's a lot of qualitative aspects to a workplace strategy. It's not, it's not just uh, you know, realigning work patterns and redoing the furniture and adjacencies and, and uh, consolidating people and getting a consultant to help you work on productivity. It's, it's about a, a healthy workplace. Uh, you know, the, 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 the car wash, the daycare, the, the physical workplaces, yes, but the con connectivity and support from IT are, are, are very important. And um, they really enhance the strategic facility planning process, which is more of a capacity planning process and bricks and mortar. So if you were to take a look briefly at, at a workplace strategy process, it's really no different than any other project. You know, you've got to you've got to come and uh, uh, do your research, set your goals, and then scope, budget, and schedule. And then go out and implement. So, in in terms of the final results, it's you know the things that you can see. Yeah, it's probably going to be a space consolidation. Uh, work from home, but what we're seeing today is maybe the days of space consolidation oh, God, are, are gone. Um, I'm sorry, my, my slides magically skipped forward for no reason. Um, um, so that your workplace strategy implementation is going to look something like this, but the, uh, the red lava lamps are not included, typically. And the reason why we're doing this presentation today is that back in uh, last fall at World Workplace and in Facility Fusion, um, I talked to people. I told them I was a strategic facility planner. They had no idea what that was. And then I'd say, okay, uh, workplace strategist. And they kind of knew what I did. Well, here, here's what's going to happen. Roger told you about uh, the capital that may be coming into the country that companies are going to start spending some money, hopefully, on facilities. Well, there's something else that's going to happen. And what's happened is that companies, corporations, have been so focused on earnings per share for so long that they've really been delivering uh, not really shareholder value, but they've been delivering the numbers to the shareholders. And that's been through mergers and acquisitions, shutting down facilities, laying people off. And at a certain point, the board of directors and the shareholders are going to say, you need to determine whether your future trajectory is up or down. Because if you keep doing this, it's going to be down. So. A definition of a strategic facility plan is a um, uh, systematic and continuous process. We have uh, some clients, we have been doing strategic facility planning with annual updates for 14 years now. Um, and it's really important to get your past performance because uh, to benchmark it because when you go and present to the executives, like the person on my left, uh, and you say, yeah, we're, we're budgeting 10 bucks a square foot operating costs for that building, their first question is going to be, well, what are we paying now? So, um, and then uh, one of the important things is uh, facility managers don't make decisions. They present options. And so it's really important to present options and the strategic facility plan really needs to be a big tent, include facility, 
renewal needs and other items. So when you combine it with a workplace strategy, um, uh, you've really got something for the, for the organization because it has, a, uh, it has an impact on productivity. And one of the things that <clears throat> I would like to point out is that there are a number of uh, locations on the IFMA website where you can go right now and download a document called Strategic Facility Planning, a white paper. This was written before the 2008 financial crisis, and this was back in an era when the uh, facility manager was doing capacity planning, i.e. new facilities, with a known future. So when the facility manager walked down the hall to talk to the HR twice a year, they, they would be talking about a known environment. So it's a little bit different than we've got right now. So a strategic facil facility plan usually uh, includes uh, restacking, renovation, uh, some type of a, a space forecast, but usually there's no fundamental change in the workplace environment. <clears throat> this is an actual demand capacity chart. This was the plan for a bank in 1998, and the bank grew from $25 million in assets in 1998 to almost $1 billion in assets in 2008. And they followed this plan they built a 30,000 square foot building in 2003, leased some space, 15,000 square feet in 2006, and then so on. And what this did is it enabled management to go and focus on building the brand and the branches and the bank rather than arguing or fighting about what the best path forward was with facilities. So with strategic facility planning, really what it is is it's a big tent. It includes a lot of different facility uh, studies. And, uh, it, for example, if you've got a master plan, somewhere on there there's a, a dotted rectangle on your site, and that says future. Well, you've already got your next building location or addition figured out for you. Um, we talked today about asset disposition. Uh, people don't really think that much about that, but that's a huge deal. And you've really got to get into the, to the financials on that pretty, pretty early because everybody just assumes it's a no-win financial situation, but you've got to take a look at, at, at if you keep the building standing versus if you tear it down. And then, of course, we've got to look at a long-term plan, short-term plan, real estate plan, and then functional obsolescence and facility renewal. Now, workplace strategy is a little bit outside the box because that's the management consulting piece. So adding on to the strategic inflection point for corporations, there's also a strategic inflection point for facility managers. If you say the average facility manager has 10 years experience, then pretty much they've got no experience planning for growth because companies quit planning for growth about 15 years ago, believe it or not. And then in 2008 and 9, most corporations laid off the planning people. So with most businesses that don't have a headcount higher than in 2008, the, the planning piece is very important, and we've got uh, a process. We're going to take, take you through the process right now and give you some uh, items that you can do, that you can take back to work and do for each, each step of the pro process. So what we're talking about today is strategic facility planning under uncertainty. It's just like we talked about with Roger in the scenario with the CFO earlier where you go through the process, you get your numbers, you get your figures, you get your scenarios, and then when something happens, you just update them and you go. And that's what we're talking about, and that's the way to survive in today's work environment because you may say, heck, we got plenty of room. We got 10% vacancy. Well, back in the heydays of growth, 10% vacancy, you were full, and if you weren't planning for a new building, you were asleep at the wheel. 
So what we've done for each of these phases, we've in the left column we've got some starter activities, in the right column these are some of the activities that you can do at work, and, uh, but you may need some resources, you may have to sign somebody. So for example, we've already get, been through uh, the scenario, parking capacity, people capacity. Something people don't look, look at is furniture systems. You may think, you know what, we're going to save a lot of money and reconfigure our space and, and just use the existing furniture system. You need to check and see if your furniture system is still manufactured because they're a lot like cars. If you go and you take a look at how cars are manufactured, it's an eight-year run. Furniture is the same way. So you may end up telling the CFO, yeah, I'm going to save a lot of money and just reconfigure furniture, and you may end up driving to Tennessee to the guy with all of the parts and pieces in his barn out back and have to go out and pick the parts and pieces yourself. And something else that, that CEOs and CFOs, C-suite people are really interested in, are our facilities better than our competitors? Um, as a consultant, that's something that, that they always want to know. And that's important because IIDA, the interior folks, did a study a number of years ago and they said the actual physical workplace is one of the top two criteria for accepting a position for more than 50% of the people. So if you want to attract the best talent and retain the best talent, you better look like you're the best company. So over on the right-hand side, the key metrics, occupancy plans, uh, swing space, the most important one is the book value versus market value. If you've got a building that's worth $14 million and the book value is $17 million, then you need to think twice about doing some improvements in it. It's telling you something about the neighborhood. So where are you headed? The 2014 annual report for GE, which had $147 billion approximately in sales, was downloaded by 800 people off of their website. Okay? So nobody's reading these things. You probably haven't read yours. You need to get a copy, and you need to read the letter from the CEO Uh, the letter from the CEO to the president uh, or the president to the um, to the shareholders and he could tell you right in there yeah we're going to expand our footprint or yeah we're going to add some new products or services so when you walk down the hall to talk to HR you can say hey about all of this expanding our footprint uh, what do I need to know to do my job? And of course they'll say, well, how did you know? That's secret, blah, blah, blah. And then you can say, well, I read the annual report. I'm just trying to be helpful. You know, you can't hire these people until there's a place to sit. So, um, so you know, a good way to begin is to start having a status report on each of these four phases. And it really helps identify space that's functionally obsolete. So for example, if you've got 25,000 square feet and you've got 50 people sitting there, what is that, 500 square feet a person? That's not very efficient. You could get, probably get 100 or more people in that space. So th these are some things that you can do as starter activities, is just looking for opportunities within your existing footprint. So the advanced activities goes back to what the CFO and facility manager we're talking about in terms of uh, doing your design ahead of time for your accelerated depreciation items. So do you want to do regular walls or do you want to do uh, you know, movable walls, green zip, and so on? So in terms of increasing productivity and increasing uh, uh, integrating that into the strategic facility planning process, what we have now is a couple of companies out there that provide tools and they also do consulting and they help you optimize your workplace. That's an important uh, not to forget when you're going out and spending some money you want to know how to you know what's the productivity impact. So in terms of how to get there it's all about scenarios. You come up, you, you know, 
there's only a certain number of things you can do. If you got a building, you can do an expansion, you can renovate it, you can lease space, you can move to some new lease space, so on and so forth, and then you've got your cost impact. But the big value add to the corporation is your what if uh, uh, analyses where you change your variables and then doing a net present value financial analysis where it, it takes a look at the earnings per share impact for both the operating and capital costs for all of these, uh, for all of these uh, scenarios. So um, as we look into the future, um, strategic facility planning, capital budgeting, a workplace strategy, these things are very important, they're very inter in, interrelated and uh, generally speaking with respect to the uh, results of our survey, uh, only about half the people are doing the things that you need to do to be successful. So one of the things that you can do is just start incrementally to do these uh, you know, short-term, long-term capital budgets, start identifying roof replacements, roofs last 20 years, find out how old yours is, you know, get a cost to replace it. Chillers, same thing. VAV boxes are all 25 to 30 years. And you go in and start looking at your big ticket items and what that does is that starts to give you some gravitas with respect to your technical planning capabilities with the C-suite. So what we would like to do is, uh, oops, um, is uh, what I wanted to do is, is, is just summarize the, uh, the uh, questionnaire that was sent out to everybody. We've only got about 22 responses so far. And uh, rather than go through and bore you with a bunch of detailed uh, responses, what we're going to do is we're going to develop a, an Excel worksheet where you can give yourself a rating on that worksheet and then see how, the, how you compare to um, the other facility managers in the survey. Um, the format of the survey was Basically, if, if you had a, if you scored a three, you had uh, work processes in place uh, to uh, track performance and to perform all of the different activities required for each area of the survey. And if you got a two, you had some of the work practices. And if you got a one, you had either none or very few. So, um, I'm, I'm especially kind of reaching out to the people uh, in the smaller corporate facilities because, you know, I think most of the larger corporations have a lot of that information. And, and the people that work for smaller corporations are going to have to, you know, self-perform. So um, it helps to have some benchmark data. It helps to have kind of a laundry list. And if you say, Barry Lynch, you know, you didn't give me a checklist. Well, if you look at the survey, it's got a laundry list under each of those items, of sometimes up to 10 items. And so that's your checklist. So you take out those items. For example, uh, in one of the categories, it's occupancy plans. So um, that's a way for you to do a checklist of uh, what you're doing right now and then what you haven't done. So um, what I would like to do now is open it up to any questions in case anybody has some uh, questions about uh, the presentation, things that weren't clear, or maybe some of the things that you can do uh, back at work. Great. And if you do have any questions, please feel free and type them into the question box on your control panel. And I'll present them to Barry. We'll give you just a moment to do that. Now, now Roger's going to sing one of his favorite country songs here while we're <laughs> waiting for your for your questions. And uh, so uh, we need to have those come in pretty quick because he's not a very good <laughs> singer, <laughs> but he's got a good twang. Let me tell you. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, 
Well, while um, we they're asking, um, one question is if the PowerPoint will be available. Yes, we'll make the PowerPoint available after the webinar. Yes, and um, um, it probably won't be available today. What I'm going to do is uh, there's going to be two PowerPoints. One of them you're going to be able to, uh, to click on a link and, and actually watch a recorded version of this where, believe it or not, GoToMeeting dropped the ability to share a video between our last webinar last week and today. So that's why we're kind of winging it with IFMA radio today. And, um, but what we're going to do, we'll have the uh, survey results. We'll have, uh, you can watch the video, and then we'll also have the slide deck. And uh, also we'll have the facility cost conundrum, which is the, uh, why it's really hard to uh, cut facility costs. If you try to cut them 10%, you can only get 2% because uh, you know, you can't cut insurance, you know, you can't cut taxes, et cetera, et cetera. So that'll be in there and, uh, um, you know, we'll just send Joshua some, some stuff that also may be pertinent. Um, do we have any other questions? Yeah, someone's asking, what was the name of the white paper that you had mentioned? It's called uh, Strategic, it's really hard, it's Strategic Facility Planning and then colon a white paper. And if you go to ifma.org and do a search, it's, it's located in the knowledge management area and I believe it's also included in the IFMA foundation area and some of the councils may have it also. It's a, it's a no charge type of a document. It's just a PDF. It's 20, 30 pages. Yeah. Yeah. So what you might want to do is go to the knowledge, if you're a member, which if you're a technician, you're most likely a member, um, just go to the knowledge library on the website and search that. It's probably loaded in the knowledge library and you can just download it for free as a member. Yeah, and, and we have a, a white paper at the Labar uh, website, L-A-B-A-R-R-E hyphen I-N-C, just like on the email. And um, it's, um, it's uh, I'm not sure where it's located, but it's, uh, it's about uh, restarting your strategic facility planning process. Um, that, that paper was actually written in response to a, um, a presentation I gave to APA, which is the college uh, facility uh, plant people. Um, one of our local LITMA uh, members invited me to, to give a, a talk to the regional APA conference on strategic facility planning because he said, yeah, we got, a, we got a master plan and it just sits there and there are these little dotted squares and it doesn't do anybody any good. And, uh, you know, I had been talking to him about strategic facility planning and he said, you know, that's really what we need to do. We need to annually update that master plan with the strategic facility plan. So, um, that one is, is aimed kind of generically at everybody, not specifically at this council, but at, that's another source of information. Great. Okay, we don't have any other questions, and so we're just going to go ahead and wrap this up. Barry and Roger, I want to thank you very much for your presentation. And in the next, over the next few days, look for that post-webinar email with some of this information contained in it. And like you said, if you do come up with any questions, um, their emails are on the screen right now. Feel free and reach out to them. I want to thank everyone for attending, and you have a great week ahead. All right, thank you. Yes, we're done. Yeah, there.